Winner Michael Carroll has been given a suspended prison sentence after being caught drink driving. That's nearly four times over the limit. Well, Carroll was so drunk he urinated on his car and he also collapsed in front of the police. It's the latest of dozens of court appearances, but as he told Natalie Gray, he really is trying to turn his life around. Not that everyone is sympathetic. A nervous Michael Carroll arrives at court with an overnight bag in case he's sent to prison. He'd been trouble-free for three and a half years until this incident on August the 1st. A stunned motorist saw him swerve across the road, bump into curbs and plough over a roundabout, with his wipers and indicators going near his home in Downham Market. Prosecutor Gwen Wallace said he couldn't keep a straight line. The witness went to Carol's window and said, Son, I think you've had too much to drink. Carol replied, Son, you're not my dad. Do you know who I am? He was eventually pulled up by police in London Road down a market. He was so drunk, he urinated on his car before falling on the ground in front of them. A breath test revealed he was nearly four times over the legal drink drive limit. Ian Graham defending said Carol's life had not been a normal one. He'd squandered his winnings on a £2,000 a day cocaine habit, a habit that he'd now kicked, but Carol still had problems with alcohol. Mr Graham said he has to wake up every morning knowing he's blown a golden opportunity. He's revolted by his behaviour on the day of the offence and knows the party is over. When we met a year ago, you told me you'd turned a corner. Yes. Have you? Yes. What made you go mad on this occasion? Just a little blip. Just a blip. But you've been given a second chance. Yeah. You thought you were going to prison today, didn't you? And I got my bag. <laughs> So this really is it? You're really going to make this work for you? Yep. <laughs> Why do you want to do that so much, Michael? It's done. Magistrates gave him a 16-week prison sentence suspended for a year on the condition he gets alcohol treatment, ordered him to do 120 hours of unpaid work in the community and banned him from driving for three years. Perhaps it would have been good if he had gone to prison and uh, been a lesson to him and other people who might be influenced by him as well. Well, I think he could have got a bit more, really. For, he's got a lot, lot of sentences so against him, so I think you know that's a bit could have got better, could have got more really. But Carol's agent and biographer said Carol had turned a corner, and this was a one-off. He'd had a row with his, his girlfriend, and uh, he knew he shouldn't have done what he did, but um, he just lost it momentarily, like we all do at times. But he is really, really trying. So Carol walks free from court, knowing this really is his very last chance. Natalie Gray, Anglian News, Kings Lynn Magistrates Court. Well, from a drunk driver to a drunken email message that's landed its teenage sender in trouble with the FBI, no less. It was sent by Luke Angel from Bedfordshire to US President Barack Obama. And it's gone down so badly that Luke has been banned from ever setting foot in America. Well, Martin Stew's in Luke's home village of Silso, and he joins us now. Martin, it certainly seems the Americans were not amused by this. Uh, no, they weren't, Jonathan. Uh, it, America, known as the land of the free, uh, well, it turns out they're not so keen on freedom of speech when it comes to emailing their president. This story all goes back about a month, when Luke Angel, who's 17 and lives here in Silso in Bedfordshire, sent an email which even he admits was crude and abusive to the White House. In it, he criticised the president and uh, the US government. Uh, now, the next, th oh, oh, it's worth saying, actually, when he wrote this, it's believed that he was drunk and had watched a few too many conspiracy programmes. Now, the next thing Luke knows is that he gets a knock on the door from the local police. They've been instructed by no less than the FBI, who've told him that he's banned from travelling to America ever for the rest of his life. Uh, now, we couldn't talk to Luke today, unfortunately, uh, but Keely Knowles from uh, The Beds on Sunday told me he was pretty surprised by the reaction. When I met him, I kind of thought, no, he doesn't really seem that he's that bothered about it, doesn't really think it's a, a big thing, but it's just, it's dividing opinion across the world. I mean, it's been on Fox News, NBC, um, it's been all over the papers in America and in England, particularly topical because of the time of year and about what's happening in America. Um, so just really good timing and just a really great story. Well, yes, the uh, US Department of Homeland Security couldn't actually comment on this case today, but Beds Police did tell us that Luke will not be facing any criminal charges, though it is said his parents are far from happy. I bet. Thanks very much, Martin. Sure. Well, it is 13 minutes past six, and you're watching Tuesday... 
More news now. An inquest have opened into the deaths of a father and daughter discovered at their home in Sybil Headingham in Essex on Saturday. The coroner heard that post-mortem examinations had confirmed that Margaret Parides, who was 16, and her 48-year-old father, Costas, both died from stab wounds. Police say they're not looking for anyone else in connection with their deaths. A local MP has called for a gag on the mass murderer Jeremy Bamber, saying a recent interview caused immense distress to the family of his victims. Bamber was sentenced to life in prison for murdering five members of his family at Toll St. Darcy in Essex 25 years ago. In a recent interview with the Sunday Times, he blamed his sister for the killings. In a House of Commons debate, Priti Patel, the Conservative MP for Whitham, called on the government to ban convicted killers from giving interviews. The Norwich and Peterborough Building Society is facing compensation claims from hundreds of customers who believe they were missold investments. NNP's investment firm Key Data was put into administration in June last year and is being investigated by the Serious Fraud Office. Claimants are arguing that NNP failed fully to explain the risks of investing. NNP says it will review the complaints and stand by its investors. Now, people in a Suffolk village have been protesting about what they say is a disgusting smell that comes from a plant that disposes of dead animals. People living near the site in Melton, near Woodbridge, are also angry over plans to expand the business by building an incinerator. Bhavani Vadi takes up the story. They're in a serene Suffolk lane, but these protesters are far from calm. It's like rotting flesh. It's like death, death smell. It's absolutely sickening. It gets into the whole whole house. We've had this smell. I've lived in this property nine years in November and we've had this smell continuous. This is how people living in Melton near Woodbridge describe the smell coming from a site which disposes of dead farm animals. They're now protesting over plans to expand the clocks of Melton plant. The proposal to build an animal cremation system will be considered by Suffolk Coastal District Council on Thursday. Residents say the foul smells coming from this plant have already made their lives a misery and that it's the wrong site to build an incinerator. I feel it's going to be worse if we have an incinerator with more animals, dead animals, you know, coming in. I think it's going to get worse. The company's owner wasn't available for an interview, but he did later tell me on the phone that his business complies with all the necessary environmental health rules and that the premises is inspected regularly by the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. Today, there was no smell, but people living nearby say that's often not the case. They hope their protest may have some influence on the local planning authority. Bhavani Vadi, Anglia tonight, Melton. Let's hope they find a solution to that one and fast. Now, in